Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to another Empires and Puzzles video. And in this video, we are fighting my first team with triple limit breaks, or three double limit broken heroes is a better way to say that. And I think one where they've made some strong choices, not like ones where they've just done whoever, which I've seen a lot of those teams around. If you're getting frustrated with Empires and Puzzles, let me just say that Gemstone Legends probably has the things you're looking for. They have a mercy system that guarantees a legendary hero after a certain amount of pulls, and we're not just talking about a weak legendary hero from a pre-selected list. They have a wish list that you can put any hero in the game on to boost your chances of pulling that specific hero. They take into account player feedback, and many of the changes that have gone live in the game were based on player feedback or were player suggestions to begin with. They're even going to give you a free $50 starter bonus just for downloading from one of the links in the description. If the earlier stuff somehow wasn't enough, you can be a hero in wars, even just using rare heroes only. They have tons of events that allow you to earn free ten pulls and other very usable high value stuff. Gemstone Legends really has a lot going for it, so come check it out if you're curious to see why tens of thousands of people have left Empires and Puzzles to come play. So we've got uh, very high level troops, and these are ones where the, for the most part, the um, ether ability is actually well synergized with the hero. So it's so funny to see Obicon going from a completely worthless season one hero to a premier tank with his double costume. The stats are ridiculous too. Um, Jesus. Okay, so uh, let's take a look here. His ether ability is, at the start of battle, this hero heals for 100% of dealt normal damage for 6 turns. He's probably going to get 2 slash attacks in, maybe, throughout 6 turns. 2 or 3, perhaps. Actually, I'm going to guess 3. And they're probably going to be hitting for high 100s to maybe low 200s. With, uh, yeah, probably high 100s, I'm going to guess, without defense down or, or an attack boost. Um... How much mana is he getting? Still five. Uh, yeah, and then you should be familiar with his normal skill right now, but... Um, wow, so as I say that, I actually legitimately forgot about this third bullet point that he's regenerating mana for each counterattack. So it's only 95. Well, 95 is still pretty solid, but yeah. Interesting, I did... <laughs> I forgot about that. Okay, so that's what we have. Um... Ojima, who's just going to punish uh, minions and also give an additional mana boost. Defense up is pretty solid. Looks like they've built him full attack probably, and he's going to get 20% more, which is going to be over 200 more. So he's going to have more defense at the beginning of the match than Obicon will. So these guys are going to be really hard to kill. Um, reduces mana... That's annoying, because the team that I want to bring relies on that a lot. Alright, so this is one where Fiend Resist is just a terrible ether ability. And I feel comfortable saying that. It's just terrible. The case where this could actually be relevant feels so incredibly niche, where during the first six turns you're going to get a Fiend on this particular hero that's going to change the outcome. Because it doesn't affect the rest of the team. So you just have one less fiend on your team. Does that really matter? I don't think so. So this is one where they're clearly just going for the stat boost. Quite significant and just ridiculous to be seeing HP over 2,000. I can't get used to that yet. This guy's like a... Uh, oh, all allies. I thought he was a caster nearby. I don't like these charge heroes on the wing, so this will be interesting. The center three can definitely beat me all on their own. I think I'm going to go yellow and just see how this goes. But I'm very curious to evaluate this uh, vampire ability because it, it certainly has some good potential. <clears throat> All right, three strong, three tiles from a strong stack and not quite halfway dead. So that means you need six or seven tiles in a 3 2 stack and and two of these heroes are limit broken uh i did build rock for defense more 
but pretty solid attack damage. Um, all right, this hit's going to hurt, and this will not count as dealt normal damage. Just something we need to remember. Firing again, and he's got that superior revive too, which is just so annoying. All right, my uh, dream of healing has been squashed. And he's firing again, so the speed there is just crazy with the mono bonus, the bard hero. <laughs> again, oh my god. I don't think he even did a slash attack the entire time because he wasn't able to. Let's see if we can just get one kill. All right, superior revive. Superior revive. And we're dead. Jeez. So, <laughs> I don't think you can attribute that to much more than just these stats are ridiculous in addition to what's going on with the superior revive and and the stats is really what was happening there um and yeah the frequency that he was firing was unbelievable he pretty much killed me single-handedly all right there's five tiles so we got our specials this time um I do want to see what this slash attack does, so we're just going to waste a turn here. Because I want to see how much damage he's dealing. 90. Why was that so weak? That's surprising. Um, and I'm not going to fire Calerva. Okay, no superior revive that time. Alright, so now we're dealing with the rest of the team. Let's just take him out. I might take one of the other heroes out that I don't want to. We did. Okay. Um, but let's see what kind of hit we're looking at. Keep in mind, uh, we have oh, no defense against special skills anymore, so that's full damage. 659 is big, especially for what she's doing. Uh, this might... Kill. Yeah, I don't. I want to rematch this team one more time. I'm really pushing my luck here, though. Do I want to use the same team again? Let's try buff blocking to see what uh, what that does to you know just in terms of evaluating the how difficult of an opponent he is. Don't think I'll be able to do this before he fires. I might be able to. Depends on. No, this is going to be a big combo. Well, we still might beat him to it, but... Nope, not anymore. But at least we can dispel. Quite a generous combo. Can't be ignored. Alright, so we'll dispel here. Uh, this should kill. Yep, okay, no superior revive. Alright, now we'll finally get to see a hit from... Ojima, no minions on this team, 560 to a pretty tanky hero, so not a tremendous benefit from the stat boost there. So I feel like I've seen enough to uh, share my conclusions. Um, first and foremost, Obacon is a very solid tank, really impressive. Um, worthy of the double limit break, not saying that should be your top choice, but is he, can he, um, d how do I say this? 
Does he justify that as a possibility? Absolutely. Great synergy there between being a tank, purples being the dominant tank color at the moment, sort of purple and yellow, um, superior revive, huge stats from the costume bonus, making the um, double limit break stats that much higher. The vampirism just is synergized well with the tank. We didn't see a lot of damage, so I might try to maximize that in the way I built a team around him. Um, and also just the mana generated from counterattacks is just so many things synergized well for a tank in one place. So fantastic tank. Um, the team as a whole, not good in my opinion. This is where I think the the number of limit breaks they chose and, and the ones they chose to me come across as very rushed and short-sighted um, because I could see someone maybe being like, well, clearly they just did it for defense. Purple tank with two yellows, that's clearly a defensive formation that they're attempting there. Um, but not the right choices and not even the right position. You would want the, uh, you, the queen on the left so that her mana ability lands first and then Ojima fires after and generates mana from that. So just some peculiar decisions and not a particularly difficult team. Like the first battle... I lost to Obicon. Second battle I won, third battle I won. So um, that really just says a lot about Obicon and I think the flanks had very little to do with the outcome and the wings even less. It's nice having a very fast hero on the left wing just for quick damage. It really puts a lot of pressure on, but not well synergized because he really performs best with minions and on defense, people are like, well, I'm just not going to bring minions against this team because it's going to make them better. Um, and lastly, the other wing, charge heroes on the wing are just not a good decision. I think ultimately charge heroes on defense are not a good decision. They can absolutely work, but it's just introducing a risk and you can decide whether that risk is worthwhile to you. But on the wing is the worst position for them because they are firing maybe never in the entire match. Um, and also you would want, <laughs> if you're going to run this here on the wing, you want them on the left wing because they're potentially generating mana. So that means if they generate mana first, those heroes can fire in the same turn. If you have all your heroes almost ready to charge, they fire last and generate mana, Those none of those specials are gonna be able to be used that turn. So just a waste. So that, just all those kind of warning signs that I'm talking about feel in line with the limit break decisions aside from Obicon. So not the decisions I would make, even if you have multiple of the materials, unless you just are planning to spend like crazy on every ether portal, which I think is an extremely low value portal, the lowest value portal. I should, I should do a video just talking about that, but, um, just do one. Pick it. If, if you need to pick someone, just pick who your tank is going to be, think it through, and then hold them for a little while. See what happens, because otherwise you're just wasting an expensive resource. Clearly these people purchased these, because we're talking about 30 Alpha Ethers. We've been given 10, and maybe you could have earned 5. If you're super lucky, maybe you could have gotten 7 or 8. Um, so you're still having to purchase, and it's a 1% chance to receive 5 of them. So, yeah. Um, those are my thoughts. Let me know what you think. Uh, I feel like that's as in-depth as I want to go. I think there's plenty of depth there and a lot of food for thought, which is the goal I want to have is, like, take this information in, think about it, and that will help you decide what you want to do. So hopefully you guys are thinking critically. Critical thinking is an incredibly, uh, incredibly valuable skill and one that I am strongly in support of. So, yeah. Hit the like button if you appreciate this content, subscribe if you find yourself coming back to these videos, and hit the bell icon if you want to be the first to be notified when these videos come out. So if you're trying to evaluate these decisions, hit the bell icon and you'll receive these videos as soon as I post them, giving you the information that you want directly. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.